Good evening, Venerable Rinpoche, Vice Chancellor Professor Joseph Sun, Honorable guests, fellow students, welcome to the university lecture on civility held by I Care program. My name is Si Chai, a year one student majoring in anthropology, and I will be your MC today. We are very honored to have Master Yongge Mingyur Rinpoche to be our speaker sharing with us the journey to joy. Please join me for a big applause to welcome Rinpoche. It is my great honor to be the MC for today's lecture. Since I was four, I started meditation in the Buddhist community called Plum Village. I've learned how to practice meditation with mindfulness. It has brought me peace and calmness in many moments, which have supported me to go through difficulties and stress through my childhood and teenage. Thank you once again for giving me this chance to be here and I'm really grateful to serve as the MC today. May I also take this chance to introduce the IQ program to you. The IQ program is a signature student program in the Chinese University of Hong Kong. First launched in 2011, it has the vision of facilitating students to initiate long-term interest and commitment to serve the local, regional, and international communities. Each year, the IK program presents the university lectures on civility. It invites prominent speakers around the world to speak on issues about civility and humanity. This year, we have the great honor of having Tibetan Buddhist meditation master, Yongge Mingyur Rinpoche, as our speaker. Mingyur Rinpoche is dubbed the happiest man in the world since he participated in a study of brain activity in the University of Wisconsin Medicine in 2002, where scientists found that advanced meditation increased mental happiness. He has been through strict training in Tibetan Buddhism. He was invited to be uh, at the, since a very early age. At the age of 17, he was invited to be a teacher at his monastery's three-year retreat center. In addition to extens extensive training in the meditative and philosophical traditions of Tibetan Buddhism, Mingyur Rinpoche has also had a lifelong interest in Western science and psychology. He is working with professionals from a wide range of disciplines to adapt his joy of living retreats for use in different contexts, including hospitals, schools, prisons, and leadership training. May I now invite our Vice Chancellor, Professor Song, on the stage to extend our warmest welcome to Mingyur Rinpoche. Professor Song, please. not taken off my shoes, so I better don't, don't stand over there. The very venerable Minger, the Rinpo Chair, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen, we are very, very honored and very happy to have Rinpo Chair be with us this evening. I guess um, you don't need my many uh, introduction about uh, Rinpo Chair, but just to, to mention that uh, he has been known to be the happiest person on earth based on, of course, uh, his behavior as well as some uh, EEG and scientific investigation. And he has, uh, through meditation and mindfulness uh, exercise, been able to help a lot of people to achieve his level of happiness. He has also written two very important books, The Joy of Living, um, the Joy of, uh, Living Unlocking the Secrets and the Science of Happiness, both of which are New York Times bestseller. And um, the reason why we um, invited him to come is because uh, we believe that life should be happier. Although we are living in a world full of this harmony, dispute, and a lot of discontentment, but through our, the training of our mind, we can regain peace, love, and friendship. And um, in the past few months, I think our university has launched a, a series of programs 
trying to promote um, mental and psychological well-being. And I myself have also uh, gone through some mindfulness training. And I think that it helps me to bring back some peace in my mind. And I understand that uh, many of our students as well as staff on this campus uh, also cherish to have such opportunity. And today, when I come over here, um, I've never seen Feng Fu Toy so beautiful before. <laughs> and uh, this is really um, making our beautiful campus even more impressive. But this is a very sacred place, uh, Rinpoche, for our university, because this is the place uh, where this sculpture behind me is called the Gate of Wisdom. And people go through this gate, will graduate with happiness. <laughs> So, um, so this is, in fact, the best place for you to uh, teach us how to become even happier with or without graduation from this university. <laughs> and um, I, I, I'm sure that uh, with your enlightenment and, and your wisdom, uh, we can all benefit. And I know that you have uh, gone through many, many talks already uh, in Hong Kong, and you told me that this is a multi-stopped, um, a multinational trips for you. Uh, you are preaching and helping people from many countries, uh, from Latin America to Asia to Europe. And we are very grateful that you stop by in Hong Kong and help our uh, young people in this university. So ladies and gentlemen, please join me to put our hands together for Rinpoche. Thank you, Professor Sung. May I now invite Rinpoche to share with us his stories about being in the journey of joy. Rinpoche, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much for uh, all the um, guests, our professor and all the um, students and uh, all the voluntary staffs who make this available. And welcome all the students. Um, uh, <laughs> so now, um, today's uh, talk title, so do you remember today's talk title? What is the title? You come here and you don't know the title? <laughs> if you know, just say it. Hmm? Journey to joy, or journey to happiness. Okay, same meaning. So, I would like to share you about how to be more happy. Okay, happier. So, after this talk, you all will be happy forever. Right? Yes or no? Yes. How many of you believe? <laughs> and how many of you not believe? Okay. Those who not believe, you are smart. <laughs> sorry, those who believe, I'm sorry. <laughs> After this talk, you will not become happy forever. It's impossible. But you will learn something. Maybe you can become happier. Right? That's I hope. Okay. So now, how to be happy? How we can make more happy? Happiness, suffering is mental state. Right? Although 
in our life. Some situation we cannot change. Right? For example, getting old. I, I know most of you are now young. <laughs> but sooner or later we're going to get old. And sometimes sick. Sometimes there are some problems. We cannot change all the problems out there. But we can change our mind. We can change how we react to the problem. Our mind is in our hand. Right? Even someone come pointing gun at your head, but still your mind is in your hand. Yeah. So, the key point of happiness, if you really want to be happy, one of the most important thing is we have to learn about our mind, care about our mind, and see about the fundamental quality within our mind and within ourselves. That's the most important one. You cannot really get lasting happiness from the outside circumstances. So therefore, I will teach you how to be happy on the mental level. So on the mental level, what we have to do? The best way is the meditation. So today I will teach you a little bit simple technique of meditation, okay? So how many of you learned meditation before? Okay, and um, how many new or never meditated before or new to meditation? Raise your hand. Behind, if I can see, raise hand higher. Okay, so most of you are new. That's good. So I like to teach meditation to the completely novice, completely doesn't have idea of meditation, okay? So what is the essence of meditation? The essence of meditation is what we call awareness. Awareness. So I know how to say in uh Kokti. <laughs> Koksi, right? My pronunciation good? Thank you. So, essence of the meditation is Koksi. Koksi means. <laughs> um, Koksi meaning is. Can you, can you raise your hand? Now, can you raise your hand? Like this. Okay, do you know you are raising hand? Yes or no? Yes. yes. So that is kokti. You know you are raising hand. So that is what we call awareness. So can you put, please, please can you put your hand on your head? Okay. And do like this, circle your head. Don't worry about your hairstyle, okay? <laughs> what do you feel? Any tactile? There's sensation, right? For me, I don't have hair, so I have small, small hair, so I feel a little bit rough. My head is like, you know. So, you feel some sensation. You know there's some sensation, right? So that is kokti. That is awareness. So that awareness is the essence of meditation. So if you get in touch with your, un, your own awareness more and more, you will be more and more happy. That's the secret. If you want to be happy, if you want to be free from stress, if you want to be peace, it doesn't work very well. Normally, our mind does the opposite. For example, Poro Pao. So you know Poro Pao, right? 
in Hong Kong, special food, porobao. I, I, I like porobao sometimes, not all the time, okay? <laughs> so, now I will give you one minute of time that, and during this one minute, what you have to do is, you are not allowed to think of porobao for one minute, okay? So now please close your eyes. No poropao, okay? You can think of anything else except poropao. No poropao. Okay. How was it? Is easy or not easy? Uh, I, sometimes I ask you to raise your hand so it becomes more interact. Um, so therefore, don't be shy, you raise your, your hand, okay? So it's also good for exercise your hand, you know? <laughs> so how many of you feel this is easy? Raise your hand. Okay, how many of you feel this is not easy? Raise your hand. Haha. <laughs> okay, most of you feel it's not easy. Yes, of course, not easy. If you say, don't think about poropao, your mind only think about poropao. <laughs> Big poropao, medium poropao, small poropao, poropao with the cheese, without cheese. <laughs> All this jump up in your mind and go around you. <laughs> So, therefore, normally in our life, there's many situations. We have stress, stress, right? Do you know stress? Any of you familiar with the stress? So, most of you are going to study sometime when you, uh, when you are in the university, when you do study, you may face a lot of stress many, many classes, you have a lot of homework, and you don't want to do homework, and you want to just look at your mobile phone, right? Uh, checking your WeChat, or what do you call um, Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> or talking with your friends from somewhere else, right? But then time goes very fast, and you didn't do homework. Oh, gosh. Tomorrow I have another exam or deadline, something, something, something. So we feel very stressful. Or sometimes, especially you are young, and you might have a um, problem with the relationship problem, right? Maybe you are looking for Mr. Perfect and Mrs. Perfect. <laughs> so you cannot find. So normally, of course, there's no Mr. Perfect, no Mrs. Perfect. Sorry to tell you this bad news. But anyway... Don't look for that, okay? So, we have a lot of stress. And all this stress comes from resistance. We have some time, we want to, we have expectation, strong expectation. At the opposite, we have very rejection, resistance, don't like the situation, whatever. So, expectation and aversion or resist. This too makes our mind unhappy and then cause a lot of stressful feeling, depressed sometimes, sometimes feeling of not worthy or cannot see meaning of life or cannot see the meaning of even I studied this, what's the goal? Or the world is now getting worse and worse. What's the benefit of this making a lot of effort? But my parents say, you should have to study. So, so many things like that. So, now, for the meditation, we are not blocking thought and emotion. Don't block Purupao. But we are not following that. We, the main point is, we try to connect with awareness. Kokti. So that is the essence of meditation. So now you have two choices. 
one, maybe you can learn first technique of meditation. Or second one, maybe I will tell you a little bit benefit of the meditation. So which one you like? Benefit, benefit of the meditation or the, you want to learn the real technique first? Technique first, raise your hand. Okay, the benefit of the meditation, raise your hand. Okay, technique. Good, good choice. So I will teach you what we call awareness of the body. The first part of meditation is important. So normally, when our mind becomes stressful, think too much, worry too much, um, our mind becomes, our, normally our mind is like a monkey, you know, crazy monkey, restless, jumping here and there. So that time, what happened is, we forget our body, we forget our heart, our mind is up here, completely separate from our body, and jumping between past and future. Do you feel that? Yes or no? Maybe you not feel, but what happened is, we are thinking way in the future, and we are not happy about past event, and we lost present. Now, so past is history, future is mystery, present is the gift. Do you know that phrase? How many of you know that phrase? Raise your hand. From the Kung Fu Panda movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cartoon movie, you know, I like very much. Kung Fu Panda, part one. The, the, the Gongbu Panda part one. So there's a master, I forgot, huh? No, Sifu, it's the, U, yeah, Ugoi. It's a turtle, turtle, you know, Ugoi. The Ugoi said, past is history, future is mystery, present is the gift. So you have to be in the present now. And how to be with the present? With your body. Okay? So the kokti, the awareness, bring into your body. And how to bring this awareness into your body? Very easy. Should I tell you? Should I tell you how to bring kokti into the body or not? Yes, raise your hand. Okay. So first, I will ask you a question. Do you have body or not? <laughs> so how many of you feel you have body? Raise your hand. Yeah, that's all. Finish now. <laughs> you know you have body. You can feel you have body. So that is the kokti. That is the awareness about the body. Very simple. So just feel your body and feel the gravity within the body and feel the any sensation within the body. Pleasant sensation, unpleasant sensation, neutral sensation, doesn't matter. Just be aware of sensation. You don't have to do anything. Don't block the unpleasant sensation. Don't look for pleasant sensation. What you need is Koksi, uh, awareness. If you have awareness, you are free. Okay? So now we're going to do this together. So please try to keep your spine a little bit straight. And you can put your hand on your knees like this, or join together. I think put on your knees more better. And now please close your eyes. Now please feel your body. And please 
Realize your body. Now, please bring your awareness on your head. So feel your head, top of your head, okay? Feel or think top of your head. Now please bring your awareness in your face and relax muscles in your face, cheeks, lips. If you don't want to smile, you don't have to smile. Bring awareness or be think of your back of your head. Feel your back of your head and neck and relax. Please bring your attention, the awareness to your shoulders. Feel your shoulder and relax muscles in your shoulder. Please be aware of your chest and relax muscles in your chest. Please be aware of your stomach. And relax muscles in your stomach. Please be aware of your lower part of back and relax. Be aware of your both arms and relax. Be aware of your both legs and relax. Now please be aware of entire your body and relax. If you cannot relax, allow that you cannot relax. That means you are relaxing. If you know you cannot relax, that's okay. You have kokti, you have awareness, you are, you are already aware that you cannot relax, then you are relaxing. So now, completely let go of the past, Let go of the future. Just be here now with your body. And relax.
And you might see so many thoughts running in your mind, in your head. That's also good. Because sign of meditation, when you first develop kokchi, your mind become more clear, so you can able to see so many thoughts coming and going in your mind. That's completely good sign, don't worry. But don't try to, don't try not forget your body, okay? Do not forget your body. Now, we are going to breathe in, deep breathe in, okay? Hold the breath now. <sighs> Let go. Relax. Okay, now few normal breath, few normal breath in and out, and continue relax. Okay, now we will do deep breathing again, and at the same time, tight all the muscles in your in your body while you're holding the breath. Tight your muscle, okay? So please breathe in, hold and tight, hold muscle. <sighs> Relax. Breathing naturally. Please breathe deep breathing again. Hold your breath and tight hold muscle. Let it go. Natural breath. Now, please slowly open your eyes. And continue to relax. Okay, how was it? Nice. So how many of you feel a little bit relaxed? Raise, raise your hand. Okay. And how many of you feel cannot relax? Raise your hand. Okay, so did you allow that you cannot relax? So when you cannot relax, allow that you cannot relax, and then know that you cannot relax. If you know you cannot relax, that is a meditation. So then this stress or tightness is become object of your meditation. You are just observing the tightness, the tension. So for example, if you see the river, 
then you are not in the river, right? If you fall into the river, carried by river, you cannot see river. If you see river, that means you are outside of the river and are watching the river flowing. Doesn't matter. River is smooth or muddy or become waterfall. It doesn't matter. So if you have kokti, awareness, watch the tightness. If you cannot relax, there's tension maybe in your stomach, your head, your back, or your heart like boiling, boiling, you know, or the kind of like small sensation, tense sensation go through all your muscle. Just watch. Be aware of it. Say hello. So then, there's, there's space between you and stress and the emotion and the thought. So, you are free. Understand? So awareness is always pure, always clean, always free, always happy. The nature of awareness. So awareness is like sky, you know, sky. Sky is the space, let's say space. Space is always free, right? Always grounded, never change, unchangeable. But the cloud change. Yesterday, around this time, raining. Today, there's no rain. Or, or five, six days before, there's news that Taipung may come to Hong Kong, right? Even Taipung comes, space remains same thing. Taipung cannot change space. You cannot burn space, you cannot shoot space, you cannot block space. Always free. So, in our mind, the fundamental quality of our mind is awareness. Awareness always free. Whether you are not happy or happy, whether you have so much thought or no thought, whether you are clear or not clear, always free. Okay? So therefore, we have to... Um, therefore, we have to recognize that awareness. Awareness with you 24 hours. But we not recognize. If we not recognize, then although we have this wonderful awareness, look like no benefit for you. If you not recognize your own watch, watch cannot tell you time, right? Watch can tell you time or not? If you not know your watch, cannot tell you time. Okay? So now you recognize awareness and try to maintain the recognition. But first it's quite difficult. Only for a few seconds you lost. Body, sashubao. Body, poropao. Body, ah, I have no time. I have to do homework. Body, oh, tomorrow is exam, my God. But when you look at the WeChat, you forget the time. <laughs> so that's normal, okay? We will have like that. But the try again, what we call short time, many time. Just a few seconds while you're going out, while you're having coffee, while you're meeting your friends, while you're doing homework. You can do, you have your body all the time. So you can be aware of your body anytime, anywhere. Right? So you can meditate everywhere, anytime. Not necessarily always look for a cushion like this, you know. Oh, there's a reflection. Okay, anyway. Um... So, even two minutes in the morning can change the whole day. Good for your study, good for creativity. Normally, our mind has so many junk things. For example, the hard drive is full of vir virus, right? The memory of the computer then there's no space for new, new program. 
So if you meditate, uh, it's become like best antibiotic. No, no, not antibiotic. What do you call it? Virus protection? Antibiotic, right? For the, for the, uh, uh, for the computer, what do you call it? Anyway. Anti antivirus. Yeah, thank you. So one of the best is antivirus is meditation to clean your hard drive, the memory. And not just that, the memory capability of memory becomes bigger. You, you, will have, you, <laughs> you will have more GB. What do you call Gigabyte, yeah, more gigabyte. So therefore, it is a uh, Meditation is really benefit. So maybe I will tell you a little bit about the benefit of the meditation. So as professor mentioned that when I was um, young, uh, now I'm become very old, you know. <laughs> so not, not long ago, uh, 2002, since 2002, I did uh, research with the uh, scientific program, what they call long-term meditator's brain. They are research subject. So I'm guinea pig. Uh, uh, what I call, I'm red guinea pig. Normally guinea pig is white, right? I'm red. So they put me into fMRI. So normally MRI is a small one. fMRI is a very big, like one floor big, you know. And then that fMRI looked like big head with opening mouth, you know, oh, like this. So then there's a tongue coming out, uh, you know. So I have to lie down on tongue, and then like, like, sashi <laughs> on your, uh, no, poro on your tongue. <laughs> no, go inside the machine. And the machine is very, very noisy. And I have to sleep like this. I cannot move my head. Even tiny move. Then all the, all the image will be fuzzy. So they will put a lot of things here and here and here, you know, and tight my head. So I have to sit like this. Even I want to swallow. I have to do it. like that. And sometimes I get itchy, you know, here. I cannot do anything. I just do like, uh, uh, like this. I don't know what is the result for that, but then. So I have to sit like this for three hours. Three hours. Then the scientists are in the next room having coffee, you know. <laughs> mm, they are having coffee and talking to each other, and then they're telling me, please meditate for a few minutes. Stop meditation. Now meditate. Don't meditate. Meditate. Don't meditate, you know. <laughs> and then, while I'm doing that, that they, they are sending a lot of noise. Baby crying, or suddenly they're shocked, like, like firework, you know. Bah, like that, and uh, so many things terrible inside. <laughs> so then, um, after three hours later, then I can go. So the result is, what they found is what they call neuroplasticity. So not only with me, there are many meditators. They've been doing this research with many, many meditators. So 16, 17 years before, neuroscientists doesn't believe that your brain can change. So if you are born with unhappy, you have no hope. Rest of your life will be unhappy. But now they said, no. Even if you are born with unhappy, you can become a happy person. Because your brain is capable of change. No matter what. No matter who you are. So neuroplasticity. And now they found more. There's neuropathway, neurogenesis. So the recently what they said, not only brain can change, even the gene expression, gene expression within the body can change by meditation. 
So if you are not happy, the genes uh, connection are not so happy, and the expression the between the connection will change by meditation. So, good news, right? And not only that, if you meditate regularly, every day if you meditate, then even the baseline, what we call, we have some kind of like personality or the baseline of happy, happy or not happy. We have some kind of like set point. Everybody has it. So that baseline cannot be changed by other things. Not so easy. Even you win the lottery for two years, maybe okay. Again, become back to the baseline or even worse. And marriage, you know. Happy marriage. Should I tell you how long? <laughs> marriage is good for five years. It's not from me, okay, from the scientists from America. So if you want to blame, blame them. So after, <laughs> after five years later, back to the baseline. Or if you have grief, you know, you lost someone who you love, your family member, your parents or husband, wife, someone who you love, if they die, your happiness got down. But then after one, two, one or two years later, back to the baseline, baseline again. So normally we all have this baseline. But through regular meditation, even we can change this baseline. So you become more happy. Even if you are not meditating, you can be happy. Okay? So, let's finish about the benefit of meditation. So last thing I want to share you a little bit about the balance. So I think it's very important to have balance. Um, normally, as I mentioned before, sometimes we are too tight and we are too loose. All or non-thinking. Right? I, if I want to study, I need to get the Always A in Hong Kong, there's a gray A or B, something like that. A, number one. If not, then study is, is useless. Something like that. So normally, if our mind too tight, it makes a lot of extra problem. But if you don't make any effort to lose, no good. So for example, I will... I will show you the example with this microphone, okay? I will do a little bit uh, drama. So, there are three styles with uh, holding this microphone. The first style is like this. <sighs> I have to grab this microphone. Hello. <sighs> 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 That's the first style. And the second style is, ah, gosh, uh, I need to grab this microphone. Microphone, oh, ah, tomorrow. Mm. Today, I'm going to oh, do WeChat or WhatsApp or something. And tomorrow, I'm going to hold, I'm going to bring that microphone. So you are lazy. Oh, the microphone. Oh, my phone. Right? Second style. Third style. Relax your hand. Grab the, grab the phone. And bring close to your mouth. So which one you like? First style, second style, third style. Hmm? First style, raise your hand. Second style. Okay, third style. Yeah, most of you like third style. You like, but you like and you do is two different things, okay? <laughs> you like third style, but, but maybe you may not do the third style. Third style has balance. First style, too tight. Second style, too loose. Third style has balance. So we need to have balance. So how to have balance in our life? Try our best. 
you all have wisdom, capability, skill, power, love, compassion. So you are smarter than what you think of. You are more kind than what you believe. You are more capable than what you consider. Okay? We all have these good things. Nowadays, a lot of scientists, they are doing research about this basic goodness. So they all prove. You know, recently, I was in USA. They're doing basic goodness study with the babies. So two, car- two carton. One is the carton with the, uh, helping each other. Another carton is try to uh, harm, harm to each other. So they are doing this research. The baby is just young, four or five months old. They cannot speak, but they can detect eye movement, facial expression. So baby like the carton, which is helping each other. So you all have good heart, actually. But sometimes we don't believe that. And you all have very unique and capability and power and skills, a lot of things within you. But normally we don't see it. The scientist said, if we have 10 qualities, nine is nine, nine. Nine is positive, one is negative. Normally what we see is only one negative one. We don't see nine good quality within us. And we exaggerate one bad quality within us. We exaggerate, make it a big deal. Then become stressful, become depressed, become not happy, panic. So when I was young, I had panic, panic attacks. So not so happy. So when you have panic, your heart is like boiling like water. And a lot of fears, wake up with fear and tight here and so much worry. So I asked my father to teach me meditation. So he said, don't look solution in the external circumstances. Your mind face inward and the real peace is within us. So one of the, our basic goodness is awareness. So I already introduced your awareness, right? So try to, try to connect your own awareness and you will be happy. Even if you are not looking for peace or happy, you will be happy. Why? Sometimes, some, some scientists don't understand. Because many Meditation is not even looking for peace and happiness. So what meditation teaches you is be aware of body, be aware of breath, all the boring stuff, you know. <laughs> but then result, you will be happy. Right? So I did a lot of meditation and it really helps my panic. So my panic become one of my best friends. So I'm now I'm considered my panic is my best friend and my one of the my good teacher. I learn a lot from my panic. So you can do that. So when you have panic, bring your mind to the body and bring to the sensation. But if panic is too strong, sometimes don't focus to the the tense area of the body. Focus on the numb area, like arm. Um, or feet, if you focus on the stomach, too tense sometimes. So just bring, aware. So if you're aware of the panic, slowly, slowly panic becomes support for your meditation, object of your meditation. So panic, if no panic, no meditation. If there's a panic, meditation, panic will remind your meditation. Then from the meditation, you will get happiness. So in the end, you can get happiness even from the panic. But not from the beginning, okay? Don't expect tomorrow you can do that. So not so easy. So therefore, um, meditation, what we call transforming everything as support for joy. So actually, you can meditate with anything, form, sound, smell, test, sensation, even with the porobao. You know, you can be aware of porobao 
and the poro power becomes support for your meditation. Right? What is the essence of meditation? What is the essence of meditation? Louder? One more? Kok si good awareness. Awareness is the essence of meditation. So, if you be aware of Poro Pao, Poro Pao becomes support for your meditation, you know? Poro Pao, Poro Pao, Poro Pao. <laughs> You're doing boring stuff. You know, Poro Pao is n- 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 no. <laughs> not so interesting, right? When you eat, it may be interesting, but not interesting to think of. But even you're doing this, the byproduct is your mind becomes more calm, more peaceful, and more pliable, more walkable. So that's the power of meditation. Okay? So you can meditate everywhere, anytime, with any object. So you can meditate with your breath also. Breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So while you um, kokti, aware, awareness of your breath, Maybe porobao comes. You know, porobao comes and go around you. It's okay. As long as if you not forget your breath, porobao can come and can go. Don't block porobao. Don't do that. Breath, no porobao. Breath only, no porobao. So then become, then there's another con- conflict within you. You cannot meditate well. So welcome everything. So, so you begin by awareness of the body or form, sound, smell, breathing, like that. Slowly, slowly, even you can use panic. So I use my panic as support for meditation. So you can use your whatever your uh, emotion, you can use as support for your meditation. Okay? So in the end, everything becomes support for happiness. Journey to joy, what we call Problem become solution. Suffering transform into happiness. And another word, what we call self-antidote. Self-liberation. So I hope you all can do that. And you can do that. I can do that. You can do that. We all are same. We all have this capability to do that. And we all have this awareness. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rinpoche, for your inspiring sharing. May I now invite five fellow students on stage to have a chat with Rinpoche. They are from Shaw College and have just returned from a meditation retreat program in Taiwan. Jackie. Year 4 student majoring in mechanical and automation engineering. Mandy, year 4 student majoring in Chinese medicine. Kyo, year 4 student majoring in journalism and communication. Cheryl, year 3 student majoring in medicine. And Jimmy, year 2 student majoring in government and public administration. Good evening, Venerable Rinpoche. I got a question to ask you. May I ask if something bad happened to us, which make us feel sad? How can we deal with this kind of bad emotion? Do you think should we let time to deal with, to help us to deal with this kind of emotion? Yes. So if we have this kind of bad sadness, law like energy low energy or feeling of like lazy sometime or no interest what or oh, panic or whatever so what you have to do we have what we call emotion meditation so what is the emotion meditation you normally we try to run away from the emotion 
So if we try to run away from the emotion, then emotion becomes stronger and then the stay strong. But if you can face to the emotion, face to face, emotion is not so big as what we think of. Normally, I give example. So emotion is like shaving foam, you know, shaving foam, like that, and look like one piece of rock. But if you go inside, it's full of bubbles. So if you, you can be aware of emotion. So mostly for the emotion is sensation within the body. But there's some image comes, there's some words, words, image, and a lot of sensation. So emotion become pieces. So that's the how to meditate with emotion. However, if you are new to meditation, you cannot do that beginning. So when you have emotion, change your focus first. When you feel not happy, aware of your breath, breathing, breathing in, breathing out, breathing. Or listen to sound. Like now we have a lot of nice birds singing around here. Just listen. Any sound or music. Close eyes, relax. So then you can develop kokti awareness. Eventually, you can come to the emotion, and emotion becomes support for your meditation. Yeah. So good evening, Venerable Rinpoche. I got a question for you. So there is a teaching by Buddha that uh, we shouldn't tell lies. Shouldn't yeah. tell lies. We shouldn't tell lies. Yeah. Yes, we shouldn't tell lies. So, what if the government or people in, like, in power, they make up the history, they fabricate the history? What should people do, like, especially for those that are opposed by the government, to react to it? Mm -hmm. So, the lie normally, if you lie, uh, uh, normally for a short time, uh, maybe you win, uh, you, you successful, whatever. But for a long time, there's a lot of problem. So if you are facing like this kind of problem, maybe you can try your best to deal with it. Try to say truthful. If this doesn't work, maybe sometimes it may cause a lot of problem around than what Buddha said. Be as like wood. Relax. Okay. So, main thing is, lie or not, is really have to look at the result, the goal. So, goal, if you are in that situation, and you cannot change much, and then maybe there's some benefit, then you cannot do. But if you can make some effort, if you do something, can change the situation, can change the, the situation better. Try your best. But don't too tight on the result. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. Right? So you need to find balance. Venerable when temperature, um, I would like to ask you a question. Um, some people like to torture other people in physical or mental way um, in order to pursue happiness. We know that it is not right or it is not the happiness we are looking for. But how can we help them or how can we face them? Thank you. Yeah, sometimes <clears throat> um, when we face some pain, emotional problem. So normally we don't know how to free that emotion. So we create another pain, feels happy sometimes. Like you climb the rock. Oh, what temporary benefit. Or you torture your body, feels pain, but it is better than emotion pain. So this is our somehow misunderstood about the 
how to free from the pain. So, what we have to do? Meditate. So, back to breath. Breathing, breathing out, or listen to sound. Or, the, um, I told you the balance, right? Balance. So, see, if I can solve this problem, I know the, how to solve this problem. Or, I don't know how to solve, I have no answer. So ask question, do I have solution or not? If you have solution, you know solution, you don't have to worry. Because it will be okay. But if you don't know solution, if you don't have solution, worry no benefit. But it doesn't mean you just give up. So letting go is not giving up. Try your best. Use your knowledge, wisdom, capability, skill. We all are unique, right? We all have a lot of capability. We are very smart. We are hard worker. If you try, they, they will have some result. But not always the result is 100% what we wish. May not come. Sometimes yes, sometimes not. So life is like wave of the ocean. Life is like stock market. Go up, down, up, down. So that makes our life become colorful. If stock market not go up and down, then you cannot make business, right? If stock market always like this, <laughs> doesn't work. So life up and down. So when you, our life goes down, learn from there. You can grow from the bad experience. You can learn from your mistake. So normally, how you grow? Three things. From education, study, or from experience, you just do, you can grow. Or you are facing the problem. If you face, normally if you face problem, if you, especially if you take it as opportunity to grow and opportunity to, to learn, then the problem becomes very, very valuable, precious. So we have to change our mind, believe. So when you face problem, don't torture. Try to grow from there. Try to learn from there. Yeah. And we're going for share. I would like to ask, uh, is it a selfish act if I insist on pursuing my own happiness? For example, uh, if my mother considers the family togetherness as the greatest happiness, while mine is to travel around the world. So, am I selfish at all? Again, balance. <laughs> so, balance is quite important. <laughs> <clears throat> so, if you totally deny your parents and then you just fight with your pa parents and then, then maybe a little bit selfish. But if you always, yes sir, your parents and your parents always want to control, you need some freedom, right? <laughs> so the balance is quite difficult sometimes. But try your best to have balance. You can find there's a way, even though there's some problem. So normally what we call, if you go into the mountain, then you face the deadline, you know. Dead end, not deadline, sorry, dead end. Not deadline. Sometimes face a deadline too. <laughs> Even sometimes you face a deadline is okay. So if you face the dead end, then what do you have to do? The one advice is so there's a wall, you know, you cannot go. So dead end. So advice is first take out your backpack, throw over the wall. So if you throw over your backpack, then you have nothing. You have to cross over the wall, right? You will try something. In the end, you can cross over. Yeah. Good evening, a uh, valuable uh, rainwatcher. Um, my question is quite similar to the uh, previous one, but not exactly the same. Um, what I want to ask is, um, is happiness among all different people the same? How many? Um, among all, mm. Is happiness among all different people the same? What I mean is, uh, we always think that working, working too hard 
um, and sacrificing other relationships or larger time in life is a bad thing. But what if I feel happy in um, working or in earning more money? And is it incorrect or is it the real happiness? Can you say again? I cannot hear very clear at this time. Can you okay, say again? Um, maybe yes. I speak a little bit slower. And um, we always think that working too hard. Working so hard, yes. Is a bad thing. Like Ad adapting. A bad thing. Bad things. Working yes. so hard for the bad things. Yes. Mm -mm. No. Um, <laughs> no. I mean, um, working working hard and sacrificing our relationships or our leisure time is a bad thing. Ah. And um. Is we are it, working too hard, but sometimes the situation, we always sometimes encounter bad things, right? Yes, yes. Mm -mm. And um, is it the real happiness, or is it incorrect in um, working too hard, or um, in chasing success in life? Mm. Is it a bad thing, it's or is it thing. incorrect? Mm. Okay, chasing for success. So, what is the meaning of success? You have to think about. So, meaning of success is benefit for you, for others, and also makes you happy, makes others happy, no problem. You should go forward, you should um, uh, go ahead. But if success is somehow harm to many people, if you harm to others, it will harm to you too in the, for the long run. So that kind of things, you should, if you can possibly let go, you can let go. But sometimes if you're trapped in that, you cannot let go right away. Try to find a way to out. So normally, success is, if you, for example, material-wise successful. Even you become material-wise successful, and that successful benefit for the society, why not? But even you try to avoid all this successful, I want to be just peace, but if it's become only concern of ourselves, it may become selfish too, right? So need to find somehow balance. So how to find balance? Try your best, but don't too tight on the result again. Even you cannot find balance, okay. <laughs> but try our best. Believe ourselves is very important. We try to believe ourselves. Try. I'm saying try, it meaning it fails at the beginning. And we all fail, right? So being failure is the gateway to become success. Without a mistake, there will be no success. So we try, but sometimes it doesn't work. So that's your question, answer question. Similar? Are they or no? Okay. Thank you, Rinpoche and students. The floor is now open for questions. Please raise your hand if you have questions, and we will offer a mic to you. Thank you. Hello, is it okay? Hello, Rainbow Chair. Yeah, I'm Manu, and I have a question for you. Because... Uh, Where are you? Uh, hello. I think I cannot see you, right? You're oh. behind there, right? Is it okay? Raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, you can ask. Yeah. Uh, some may say that... Uh, uh, the world, uh, Buddhist, Some Buddhists may say that the world is now... Many people is getting unhappier day by day. Uh -huh. And what do you feel about it? And right. what do you think about the main problem of the of the people in modern world? I mean, do you think uh, the people nowadays are, are getting troubled by themselves, or what do you think about it? And any solution for that? Thank you. Yeah. So the world will become more worse. And what do you think about that? And what is solution, right? So solution is. Meditate. <laughs> <laughs> so then you will have no any problem. No, I'm just kidding. 
Of course. Of course, yeah, meditation, related with meditation. So one of the most important is to recognize basic goodness within us. So we all have this wonderful basic goodness. Basic goodness meaning you all have love, compassion, awareness. Awareness you know already, right? I introduced you awareness. There's a capability, skill, wisdom, power. So many good things within you. So try to get connected with the, your basic goodness and try to maintain the recognition. So then the loving kindness, compassion will manifest, wisdom will manifest, all these good things manifest. Then the world will become better. But actually, the world is not bad. But normally what we think, the world is getting worse, worse, worse. Why? We only focus on the one negative size. I told you at the beginning, right? So if we have 10 qualities above the world, one is negative, nine is positive. But normally what we focus is only one negative aspect. And then we exaggerate. And we don't see nine good qualities about the world. For example, we think the media, the news, they always have bad news, right? Why? Because if there's bad news, then everybody really interests to see the bad news. Why? Because bad news are unusual. Good news are so common. So if you show good news, um, people not, uh, yeah, yeah, good news, yes, yeah, of course. But there's some problem. What? So what we call, our brain is changing detector. Something changed, something unusual, something new, and caught, can get our attention. So, actually, world is good. And we need to appreciate that world is good. So if you appreciate, then you can see the good things around us, within us, in the society, in the world. So the appreciation is like sun shining. Recognition of your basic goodness is like sun radiation. If there's sun rise, the darkness automatically illuminates, right? So although we have this precious gem around us in the world, if we not talk about that, if we not recognize that, if we not appreciate that, although they are there, but sounds like not benefit for us. So that's the solution. Also, the recognize, appreciate. And how to recognize? The best way is through meditation. Mm. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your inspiring sharing, Honorable Rinpoche. I would like to know what should we do when we face greed and jealousy. Thank you. Greed and jealousy. Okay. Greed and jealousy, right? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> normally, yes, we all have all these things. Jealousy, anger, hatred. Special, you might have jealousy to your friends or your colleagues, you know. If you don't know, the person, you may not feel jealous. But if you know me and my friend similar, now my friend become smarter than me. Or having the exam is better than me. Oh, this is no good. Mm. Bad news, what should I do? <laughs> so that's jealous. Uh, so what should we do when we feel jealous? Meditate. <laughs> you can focus on the feeling of jealous. So when you feel jealous, if you fight with jealous, sometimes jealousy becomes bigger. If you listen to jealous, yes, my friends become smarter than me, no good, no good, become worse. So what do you have to do? Let it go. 
and bring your mind into the body and the feeling of jealous. If you face, look at the jealous, normally jealous is quite shy. Not only jealous, all this emotion is quite shy. And when you look at face to face, they are not so powerful as what you think of. So that's the one, med- one technique. So because I taught you meditation this time, so I will try to lead the technique with that one. So even I teach you a new one, you may not understand, right? So, and then, of course, if you try to rejoice, try to think of the benefit of the rejoice. So if your friend have good grade, you rejoice. If you feel rejoice, then you will get some kind of positive influence from there. You can use your friend as your example, your inspiration, your uh, kind of like help you to boost your study. So then jealous transform into wisdom. Yes? Um, Dear Rinpo Chan, I want to ask you a question is that what is your meaning in life so far? Um, Why uh, didn't you choose to kill yourself instead that you choose to live? What is your the main meaning for you to live? Yes, so normally the meaning of life actually is looking for happiness. So we're all looking for happiness. That's the meaning of our life. But what is the real causes of happiness? Difference. Everybody has different. So if you go more detail, everybody has the meaning of life different, different, different. So for me, meaning of life is when I was young, I was not happy. So unhappy because I have this panic. So through meditation, I really helps the meditation save my life, change my life. So, for meaning of my life is to study meditation, practice more meditation, and share my knowledge and wisdom to others, to help others, help the society, help, help other people. That's the meaning of my life. So you might, you can make meaning of your life. Maybe meaning of your life, normally something which is a benefit for others, it's become more meaningful. So maybe you might have friends, might have family, might have parents, might have something. So if you're doing something for them, then that's the become easy to make meaning of life. You are living not only benefit for you, living for society, for others, for friends, family. Yes. Mic there? Okay. No? Can you see? The person is there. Mic's not working? Or oh, whoever has mic. Right okay. Thank you for coming to speak. Um, my question is kind of similar to the first one, and it's uh, there's a lot of suffering in the world. Um, you walk the streets anywhere in any city, and you see a bunch of homeless people. How do you deal with that? Because you can't possibly... I cannot hear you. Can you uh, oh, yeah. ask questions this, again? Is this better? Yeah, good. So there's a lot of suffering in the world. Mm-hmm. Wherever you walk, you see tons of homeless people, and you can't possibly help everyone. So how do you deal with that? How do you like live your life every day and yes. knowing that there are people who need to be helped? Yeah. Balance. <laughs> <laughs> so... You cannot help everybody in the world. Impossible. But you are part of the world. We all are part of the ripples, you know. If you throw a stone in the lake, it makes ripples. And they bound more. And then there's a wave. So small first you become bigger, bigger, bigger. So how you can help others, help the world? 
consider as you are part of the ripples. Maybe you can help first, even your friends, family, kids, dog, or beggar on the street. Maybe not necessary to giving money only. Sometimes only money may not help really for last lasting. But you can even talk. Um, you can think about join with the um, society, uh, whatever the good action. Or you can make up some something new idea. So, so many things we can do, but always start from simple. Try your best. So don't give up. But at the same time, your mind don't too tight on the result, because you cannot help everybody in the world. It's impossible. So balance. Thank, thank you. Uh, hello, Ming Bochi. I I really appreciate um, your talk on the meditation, and I think meditation is important um, to a human. However, I didn't have a good experience just now on meditation. I, I feel like uh, I can't put away my stress, my tasks when I meditate. That means I can't fully relax. And does it mean that I can't meditate, or do I have to do something extra to help with it? Thank you. Okay, so that is normal. As I told you at the beginning, after this talk, your life will be happy forever, right? And some of you believe that, and some of you not believe. I told you, if you not believe, you're smart. <laughs> so it doesn't work right away. Meditation is like learning new language. So now I know, kokti, poropao, lehoma, no, lehoma, yeah. So only a few things. So I don't know a lot of things about the Kondongwa, right? So meditation just like that. So even you just simple things beginning. A little bit, even you got the one percent or minus zero point zero and one percent is great. So you already know the meditation, you already know the awareness. Wonderful. But when you try, at the beginning sometimes what we call waterfall experience. Waterfall experience meaning Sometimes, look like your thoughts, emotions are getting more. Why? Normally, we have a lot of thought and emotions, but we not see them, and we are become one with them. So a lot of problem. But now, when you begin to aware, it so becomes separate. Your mind become a little bit calm, clear. So you can see sometimes so many thought and emotion comes in your mind. That's the good sign, what we call waterfall, waterfall experience. So another example is, if the river become muddy, you cannot see fish in the river. If the river become calm, clear, you can see fish in the river. So our mind begin to come and clear. We are begin to see at the beginning many thoughts. Or, or about, or about the exam, or about the, my girlfriend, boyfriend. Oh, he said this uh, terrible things, or she said terrible things. What should I do? Mm, I'm not relaxing. Mm, you know, but that's good sign. No problem. Uh, hello. Uh, I want to ask. There are many people which, which are lots. As Can you say he, louder? I believe that there are many people which are not like, as lucky as us. Some of them may have no food to eat, or they have. Some of them may not may lost the ability of move, or they, some of them may have cancer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask: Is there any method for them to be? I'm more happy. Mm, okay. So, um, what you can do, you can pray for them. Now, if you cannot be there with them, if you cannot help material-wise, you have to develop this 
sense of loving kindness, compassion. Pray for them and dedicate whatever you meditate, whatever your virtue, dedicate for them. And then slowly, slowly, when you think about that, when you try to do some, something, you will come out something. Maybe in the future you can able to help them. You can able to benefit them. So that's the best way. But there's no particular miracle thing. Suddenly you can help or do special mantra or power. So therefore, there's, I, t I told you at the beginning, no one can help everybody, right? If someone can, can help everybody, then the world will not be any problem. So life is to go up and down, up and down, up and down. That's kind of like nature, but up and down, up and down is colorful. So we can learn from that. So I went to retreat uh, four and a half years without money, without particular room, without uh, plan for food, no friend, nothing. Just go. I learn a lot. I stay with the beggar. I sleep on the street. And it's really benefit for me. Although sometimes I cannot do too much, but I even sometimes talk. And whatever I can, I try my best. But at the same time, we have to accept life is like stock market. Hmm? Thank you. We may now gather two to three questions together and Rinpoche can answer them together. Hoche, thank you for coming to Hong Kong. I have a really hard problem with using the really strong emotions, the strong and negative emotions, as friends, as supports to stay present. Um, grief, jealousy, anger, they just wash over me and pull me in a, like a wave. I know you said that you're supposed to meditate on, practice on form, thoughts, um, sound, but those things are too neutral. It's really easy. Is there anything in between? Rinpoche, we may now get the two more questions. Okay. Then. Uh, Honorable uh, Rinpoche, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm a Catholic actually, but I really admire the Buddhist way of meditation a lot. And we, as Catholic, we have a long tradition of uh, contemplation too. Could you enlighten us, or me at least, a little bit more about the similarities and differences between the Buddhist way and the Catholic or Christian way of meditation? Hello, oh, can you hear me? All right, cool. Um, thank you once again for coming out. I really do appreciate it. Um, I am from the United States. I came here from a very rural place. Um, our people are very described as very proud and hardworking, and take a lot of pride in the things they do, and like their work to reflect who they are, whether it be their crops, their sport, their music, just whatever. But however, with more modernization coming in, more people are seeing suffering by the daily, and they do not know what to do in the midst of all this confusion. Um, so I'd like to ask you if you can impart wisdom that I can take back to where I'm from um, about how to deal with all the modernizations going on um, in my place and how I can help people restore their pride and their self-belief. Yeah, so um, about your question, the neutral. Uh, so normally for the emotion, we have four things. Watch, directly watch, you can emotion, but if you feel overwhelmed, then second, what we call, try something different. Try something different, listen to sound, um, or watching breath. But then another thing is, more serious is, try to make another emotion. So if you have, when I was young, I had panic. So I cannot watch panic directly, too overwhelmed, so I make anger. 
So I can make anger and watch anger. Ah, easy. Easier than panic. So then using pan meditation with the panic, sorry, meditation with anger as stepping stone to my anxiety, my panic. So therefore, this is what we call try something different. So number three, step back. Step back meaning, meaning once you have this negative emotion, sometimes there's an emotion behind emotion. So for me, I have panic. But there's a panic of panic, fear of panic, resistance, aversion, so many things behind the panic. So don't watch the panic. Look at the emotion. Behind the emotion, the motivation, the resistance, the aversion, whatever feeling, watch that one. And number four, take a break. So sometimes, even you do this step by step, you feel so much tired. You cannot continue. So take a break. Do physical exercise. Physical exercise, really good jogging. Aerobic exercise really helps. And try to sleep early. So don't sleep late and spend too much with the WeChat, you know. No good. <laughs> so, and about the, um, the your uh, question between Christian and Buddhist, I think common things about the compassion. So the Christian and Buddhist both believe want to help others help the society. So the compassion is part of our basic goodness. As I told you before, even babies has good heart. Right? The good heart is our this bone with it. But we don't know. The problem is we don't know. So wisdom meaning recognize the our true nature. So you have this love and compassion. So the for first, his question from America. So try to appreciate about our basic goodness and try to recognize the love and compassion within us and then to expand to others. So therefore, it is really benefit. Here, here, and uh, You mentioned you have the retreat for four and a Half year during the past four half, uh, half four half years. years. Right? Yeah. Can you share uh, one most important things you learned during that uh, ah okay period? And also, do you encourage people to do the retreat? <laughs> uh, re retreat. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, we may get it to more question. This is not. Oh, hello. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, on, on the road. Oh. On the road, Rainbow Chair. Hello. Um, it's actually a request. Oh, yes. To the gentleman who mentioned about the Catholic thing. I really wish that um, different religions can sit down together and exchange their ideas of helping. Because I also have this problem. I see a lot of Catholic priests, I, I'm sorry to say that I'm a Catholic, but um, their ego, or sometimes they cannot swallow their pride. And I think meditation will surely help everybody, disregard of the religion. But sometimes when like, I distribute uh, about your talk, when they know it's oh, Tibetan Buddhism, they run away from it. They don't want to advertise the mount the Catholic Church. So I really hope that one day you can do something and really sit down with the leaders. And because they lead us, if they don't believe it, what will we do? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for your advice. Yes, I will keep in my heart. And uh, we are doing kind of like meditation for secular basis, meaning you don't have to be Buddhist in order to meditate. You, are, you have religion, no religion, doesn't matter. So I make special um, a curriculum, what I call joy of living. So anyone can meditate. So we have many students from Christian, Muslim, Jewish, so they don't have to change their religion, but uh, they can also participate as our family and meditate. Thank you. One more question over here. Honorable Rambachai, 
Uh, my question is, uh, is there a relationship between mindfulness and our diet? Okay. That means what we eat or our food. Mindfulness and? and our food, the food we eat. Food? Yeah, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if there is a relationship, uh, do, relationship. You have, yeah, mm -hmm. do you have any uh, recommendations uh, okay, for okay. our students to have for food? Okay. okay. So the other question last night about the retreat. So what I learned going into mountain four and a half years is that I can make hot water. So before I don't know how to cook, now I can cook from the woods in the mountain. No need to use gas or electric like in Hong Kong, you know. Hong Kong very easy. And then you can boil, right? In the mountain, first to make fire took me many days. And after I make fire, try to boil the hot water. It took me two hours to boil one hot water. And after boil, when I drink, it tastes like smoke. So I, <laughs> so I know one thing for me is I learn a lot, a lot about a life, life, about life, you know? So second thing is I learn about meditation. So really benefit by doing this retreat. It's really helped me. And the meditation is transforming problem into happiness, right? So when I was young, I had panic. So I make friends with the panic. But I never had like this opportunity to go on street, even one hour. So first, it was amazing, you know. <laughs> I was naive. No food, no money. It's like suicide mission. But actually, I learned a lot. So special at the beginning, I get diarrhea. I almost die from the diarrhea. So that was the best experience in my life. And the recommendation to do everyone to do the retreat um, depends, right? So don't do everyone just like me, no money, no food, and run away. So it's very dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> but to do retreat, time to time, is very good. And then, um, so about the food. Um, one thing is for the meditation, if you eat poro pao, no good. No, no. Actually, there's no problem with the food. Some people, they might say, oh, you should eat this, you should not eat this. But if you become vegetarian, of course, you feel more better, more relaxed, more energy, right? Good for your body, so the mind becomes more clear. Otherwise, there's no problem. I mean, um, food doesn't change your meditation. Thank you, Rinpoche, for your sharing. We have prepared some pine cones from our campus to offer Rinpoche a souvenir. They represent the six senses, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind. We hope Rinpoche would happily continue his fruitful practice and share all this fruitful experience to people all over the world. We'll also take today's teaching and embark the mindfulness practice in our daily lives. Thank you.